Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you some uh, roses, uh, but this time a little bit easier. I'm not using the same um, reference image for this uh, painting uh, as last week. Uh, I wanted to change it a little bit to make it a little bit easier. I think that uh, painting a subject in color on a white background is an easy way to paint. So I wanted to paint some uh, pink roses for this one. And if you want to have a look at my reference image, uh, it's up on my uh, blog. The link is in the description box. Just just uh, underneath the video. So I'm starting this painting by applying some pinks on my paper and for the color I'm using a rose madder lake with nickel as a yellow. Uh, I change it a little bit each time I went back to my palette uh, so that it uh, looks a little bit more peachy sometimes, a little bit more yellow sometimes or a little bit pinkier sometimes. I think that uh, changing uh, very uh, a little bit the color is a really good way to make uh, things a little bit more natural. Each time I'm making a mark uh, with my brush on the paper, I'm thinking about uh, the petal uh, on the flower. And this way I can get a shape that is a little bit more um, close to the original uh, shape. Uh, and I'm using the form of my brush uh, in order to uh, make my work a little bit easier. This brush is very big, round and pointy and I can make oval with it uh, very easily and uh, it's the perfect shape for all the petals. And before my flower is totally dry, I'm adding uh, some uh, lavender into it in order to mark some uh, area of shadows. Uh, I think it's a perfect color for marking shadows because it's a cold color uh, and it's, it's working really great with uh, the other color I'm using today. I've started this painting on dry paper, but right now the flower is quite wet and that's ex exactly what I want. Uh, the color I'm adding right now are blending into the original color and everything is quite soft, but there is some hard edges still. Uh, and I, I really like uh, to have some hard edges and soft edges into a painting. I think it, uh, it adds a lot of interest into it and it's a, a good way to have the flowiness of uh, the watercolor and still have something uh, recognizable. I'm also painting a rosebud uh, on the top of my uh, page uh, and I'm still using the same color for this one, uh, Rose Mother Lake and Nickel as a yellow. And you can see that I've used really the, the brush to make the marks. I'm not uh, just drawing with my brush, I'm using really the shape of my brush to, to make some ovals on my paper and have the perfect shape for the rosebud here. At this stage, I'm quite happy with uh, the rose and the rosebud I've painted and I want to add some context to it. I will not make a full background uh, for this one uh, because I think that background is a little bit uh, difficult. Uh, so uh, as I wanted to keep it quite easy, uh, I, I just want to have some context to the roses and the context is some foliage, some uh, stems, some uh, leaves uh, and that's what I uh, want to do. Right now. For the green color I'm using Indian Trend Blue and Nickel as a yellow and I'm also adding a tiny bit of Rose Meadow Lake to the mix uh, because I want uh, to have a green that is a little bit more uh, murkier than uh, the bright green. I want it to be uh, closer to the, the color in, uh, in real life of the roses foliage. Uh, so uh, adding a uh, Adding a really little bit of rose madder lake will do that. And once again, I'm using uh, my brush in order to make some oval shape on the paper. Uh, I just apply my brush like a, a, a stamp uh, and it makes uh, some really beautiful uh, foliage shape. 
Of course, I'm going to uh, blend some uh, areas into uh, this foliage in order to have once again some hard edges and soft edges uh, into uh, this painting. I think it's uh, it adding a lot of interest in uh, and the flowiness of the watercolor. It is really interesting. So I, I really like to just rinse my brush quickly and then drag it on the paper and make things bleed a little bit and uh, uh, just uh, blend a little bit everything so that there is quite a variety of uh, sharp edges and uh, soft edges. I'm also changing a little bit the mix of color I'm using uh, along the way, like I've done with uh, the roses. Sometimes I will add some more blues into my uh, green mix, sometimes it will be a little bit more yellow, and sometimes a little bit uh, more rose madder -like, in order to have really different greens into uh, this painting, but uh, still with the same uh, color at the base. And once I'm happy with uh, the general uh, shape of my foliage, I can add some darker color into uh, the wet area in order to have some uh, really soft marks on my paper. But I'm really using a lot more uh, pigment here and less water so that uh, there is a really darker color uh, showing on my paper. I want to build the contrast a little bit more uh, so that the flower will pop a little bit more also uh, from the paper. And you can see that uh, the color I'm adding in the wet area are blending a little bit uh, into uh, the wet paper, but uh, it still uh, stay uh, quite uh, not. It doesn't go too far uh, in the wet area. It stay uh, fairly in place, and uh, it add a lot of uh, softness to the background, and. Uh, also a lot of dreaminess to it so it's a nice way to add some um, just feeling to the painting and have something less realistic and much more expressive. Once I'm happy with this first layer I will let it dry totally before adding some more details in a second layer uh, but right now, please enjoy some uh, image from my uh, stroll into uh, the rose garden uh, at the beginning of the month. It's, it was a really beautiful day for, for a stroll. The first thing I want to do uh, in the second layer is to add some more details in uh, the flowers. And I'm starting with the heart of uh, the big uh, rose. Uh, I'm adding some uh, pistil in here with a little bit of nickel as a yellow uh, with a tiny tiny bit of rose madder lake in order to get a new range uh, and it will contrast nicely with the yellow heart of the flower and uh, it will show uh, just enough uh, for you to see the detail. I want also to add some more volume to the petal of uh, this flower uh, so I'm uh, starting to add uh, some darker color of pink uh, in uh, the, the edges uh, where I want the most color to be uh, seen. And then uh, I rinse my brush and I uh, gradient this color into uh, the rest of the flower in order to have some soft edges uh, on one side and a hard edge on the other side. For this step, I'm looking quite closely at my reference picture in order to know where I have to put those darker color uh, into uh, the roses. Uh, I do not want to create a really realistic rose, uh, but I want to, it to be uh, quite believable. Uh, so I need to place those darker colors, those shapes, uh, those shadows in the right place. And for that, I need to look at my reference picture. 
So I'm adding this volume with a, a mix of mm -hmm. rose madder lake and nickel as a yellow, of course. But I want also to add some shadows in this area. And for that, I'm uh, uh, using, as uh, in my first layer, some lavender uh, in order to have this cool uh, tone uh, of color uh, right uh, on the side of the flower. It will make the flower pop a little bit more and appear also to, uh, a bit more warm. For this step, I'm not using uh, the big brush I was using at the beginning. I'm using a dagger brush that is quite fine uh, and uh, it's the perfect brush to make some tiny details but also uh, to uh, add more water if I want to because I can uh, either use the point of the brush to make those tiny details or uh, the uh, length of the brush uh, to add uh, more color in some area or more water in some area. It's a very versatile brush uh, that I really like to use, uh, especially for uh, vegetation. I'm uh, finished with the big rose, uh, but now I want to add some more uh, volume also to the rosebud uh, at the top. And for that I'm using the exact uh, same technique. I'm adding some colors and then I'm uh, just blending, blending it a little bit uh, in order to make those shapes appear and uh, the petal appears. I'm also using the same mix of color, some nickel as a yellow with some uh, rose madder lake uh, and in some area I will uh, add some more nickel as a yellow and some area I will add some more rose madder lake in order to still have those different tones in uh, one flower in order to make it quite vivid and uh, quite bright. I will also add a tiny little bit of lavender on the side of uh, the rose bed uh, so that the lavender is in another place in the painting as uh, the big uh, rose. Uh, I, I like to add some uh, touches of color in a different area of a painting in order to link all those elements up and also it add a nice touch of uh, cold nest right uh, at uh, the bud so uh, it appear like a shadow. The last thing I need to do in this painting is to add some more darker color in uh, the foliage uh, because right now everything is as uh, the same uh, contrast and I want to add some more darker area in order to make the flower pop even more on the paper. So for that, uh, the, the easiest way uh, to do that is uh, to add some darker color in uh, into the foliage mm -hmm. and I'm using still the same uh, mix of color in the train blue, nickel as, as a yellow and tiny bit of rose madder lake in order to just darken the color a little bit and I'm using less water this time and much more pigment in order to have darker uh, colors. And I can also take this opportunity to make some more stems uh, on uh, the paper or make some lines into uh, some leaves so that uh, it will add some uh, context to the painting and you will see leaves appear a little bit easier on the paper. And this video is now ending. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it. Please check the blog post for more information about it. And of course, tell me what you think in the comment. See you soon.